just got this flash drive here PNY 128 gigabyte with the silver jacket like this with the little semi-transparent shield inside we got a IS903 controller we also have two BGA 152 package memory chips with uh, minimal markings on them so I'm not really sure on the brand of the memory components uh, let's uh, have a quick look at the device and see if we can get it to work again usually if the device is bent when it was plugged in the problem can be resolved by getting the unit reworked uh, first thing to cover is the connector flexing the flash drive while it's in the laptop uh, often will lead to the damage of the connector now this is a nine pin connector nine pin connectors have much more real estate that they're grabbing onto the board with so um, most of the time they don't have as many issues as the four header connectors would uh, and uh, in our situation right off the top of my head I can I can't really say anything that is broken broken right here um, so if I had to place a bet on whether or not the connector is the issue, I would say not likely. If uh, anchor points haven't given away, there wouldn't be much uh, movement in this area right here. So uh, I think that part is good for us. What is flexible on this device? We have uh, this section where the memory uh, meets the board. Is it flexible? Uh, it, 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 it could be flexible with enough force, but I don't think in our situation it is the reason why it's not working. Inspect then memory components for uh, micro fractures, because that's going to be uh, number one determining thing whether you're going to be able to solve this case or not. Uh, also, what I saw here as soon as we looked at this side is this gap between the pad and uh, the board so because of these two cuts that makes the board the most flexible in this point here this component right here doesn't flex at all so what happens with the flexible board that is attached by solder uh, to this component or I should say the other way around is that the uh, board will flex solder will be forced to break off at some pads from this uh, connection that's what I would say where we would most likely have a problem so in order to figure that out we're gonna have to remove it there's no uh, other weight Flux. And the chip is off. Once the chip is off, we're going to need to prep the board. And uh, I'm going to add some uh, more flux to it to make things flow. While we add it, we're going to clean it up. This is lead free solder, so it takes a little bit more heat to remove it. We're going to apply fresh leaded solder to bond the chip with, to tin the pads. Again, add more flux.
the Siren is just so good for these tiny jobs. So powerful. I just noticed that this component pushed itself off the pads a little bit. So with micro tweezers, I'm just setting it back. Let's carry on with the tinning of the pads. Oh, that's a lot of uh, solder. But it will be fine. We'll just use it like that. There we go. Add a little bit for the main ground pad. And now we're off to do the same flux, tin. This is easy. There we go, that's that, and a little bit in the center. That's it. Now we can set it back on the board. Just gotta clear it up to find out the orientation of the chip. It's a little bit too much flux over there. Usually I would use less, but everything is already in a jig and ready to go. So just got to be careful. And I'm going to reflow this back onto the board. 350 at 40 airflow. See how it pulled itself in? It is ready. I'm just going to let it cool off a little bit and uh, plug it in to test it. This is just uh, alcohol to get rid of the um, flux deposits all over the place. Clean it up, add some more. Basically, this is going to be as good as new if, uh, if if we were able to get it fixed up this way. The only thing is, is that alcohol takes a while to dry, so I would just apply a little bit of uh, heat to speed the process up. Set to uh, 120 degrees, just to make sure that there are no uh, liquid spills underneath the VGA components and stuff like that inside of the connector. It's uh, going to start some fireworks. Pretty much done. So after this is ready, I just uh, connect it to the extension cord. And plug it in. So this is plugged in now and uh, let's see what comes up. The LED light comes on and uh, the partition comes up. So the data can start to be transferred out and uh, there we go. this is it, successful case. If you guys have a flash drive that needs recovery, definitely do not hesitate to check out the description box, the link for uh, our contact details is going to be there. In the next episode, I'm going to be going over a couple of things that uh, some of you may find interesting. Uh, this drive needed uh, head cleansing, disc inspection, and a bunch of other things along the way to uh, make at least some kind of recovery possible. So definitely do not miss that episode. That one is pretty interesting. Thank you very much for tuning in again, and we'll see you guys in the next one.